during the last part namely 12th part this is the sorry 13th part this is the 14th part with which we have started our discussion and then we try to understand as to what do you mean by investigation inquiry and the trial not in detail but whenever you come across this term you must know the meaning of it investigation always results into in general submission of final report as far as sub clause 2 of section 173 of the criminal procedure code is concerned this is the last report and hence we call it final report but in day to day life this is also what is known as charge sheet or challan we don't come across this term anywhere charge sheet is the term to which we don't come across anywhere in the criminal procedure code right from section 1 up to section 484 when we will discuss right from section 154 up to section 176 of the criminal procedure code we will come to know always i mean the steps that are taken for the purpose of investigation and arrest arrest of the detail just introduction to the chapter with this now i refer to various trials but the trial depends upon what the trial depends upon the nature of the case and what do you mean by nature of the case whether it is a summons case or whether it is a warrant case now in order to know whether it is a summons case or warrant case if you refer to section 2w which says summons case means a case relating to an offence which is not a warrant case in other words to know what do you mean by summons case this is the time for you to i mean refer to as to what do you mean by warrant case for which you will have to refer to section 2 x and then you come to know warrant case is a case relating to an offence which is punishable with death imprisonment for life or imprisonment for a term exceeding 2 years in other words whenever it is a case relating to an offence for which punishment is up to 2 years then that is what is known as a summons case and if the punishment exceeds 2 years and case is relating to an offence where the punishment exceeds 2 years that is what is known as a warrant case and hence depending upon whether it is tribal by court of session or whether it is tribal by court of magistrate the procedure as far as the conducting trial is required to be followed right from section 225 up to section 265 are these are this is the group of the sections where you come come to know various trials during the course of time with which we shall have a discussion in detail summons case warrant case now is it possible is it possible to compound an offence compromise an offence and the answer is yes there is a provision and this provision can be understood by us when we read section 320 of the criminal procedure code and by reading section 320 of the criminal procedure code you try to understand what do you mean by compoundable offence what do you mean by non compoundable offence what do you mean by compoundable with the permission of the court now if you refer to sub clause 1 as far as section 320 is concerned and come across a table and if you refer to that particular table it first vertical column makes mention of the offence second vertical column makes mention of the section number and that can be compounded by who now the sections of course are for indian penal code so if you refer to the table as far as sub clause one of section 320 is concerned you come across offences which can be compounded by the aggrieved person as far as third vertical column last vertical column is concerned who can compound the offence that person can compound the offence who of which mention is made as far as last vertical column is concerned after that i mean when you start reading sub clause 2 and come across a table these are the offenses which can be compounded by the aggrieved person only with the permission of the court hence those offenses are serious as compared to the offense enumerated as far as the table which is given after sub clause 1 of section 320 is concerned 
and the offense and the offense which is neither mentioned in the as far as table after sub clause 1 or table after sub clause 2 are non compoundable offenses and what is the effect of composition of an offense if you read the section you will come to know composition of an offense amounts to an acquittal and this is very important because during course of time when we will deal with the doctrine of double jeopardy with which you are dealt as far as constitutional law is concerned to which we have got a reference as far as section 300 of the criminal procedure code is concerned which deals with what do you mean by autrophoys acquit or autrophoys convict with which we shall be dealing. So this is an acquittal. Acquittal is different from that of discharge. What is the distinction? We will come to know at the time when we deal with various trials during the course of our lecture, then you will understand the importance of it. But then this is the time for you to know the terms, namely compoundable, non-compoundable, compoundable with the permission of the court accordingly. And what is the effect of composition of an offense? To understand criminal procedure code, we also come across two more terms in day-to-day -day life or as far as criminal procedure code is concerned, namely police custody and magisterial custody. What is this? Now custody presupposes arrest, a person is arrested. We shall take into consideration detail, in detail right from section 41 up to section 60, no doubt about it. Arrest of persons, yes, but if a person is arrested, then what is required to be done is mentioned and it is very clear. A person arrested is required to be produced before a magistrate within a period of 24 hours, so including a period of journey. That is the provision we have as far as constitutional law is concerned. And hence during course of lecture I made mention of what? Article 20, Article 21 and Article 22 of the Constitution of India are required to be thoroughly studied because that is the basis as far as criminal procedure code is concerned. So if he is arrested by the police, for the purpose of collection of the evidence, he can be taken to the police station. Now if he is, if he is allowed, but mind well, there cannot be detention and he is required to be produced before the magistrate within, within a period of 24 hours, excluding the period of journey. But after that he can be detained at the police station as per the order or as per the permission which is given by the magistrate. So when he is kept at the police station, when then in when he is in the custody of the police, it is said it is said that he is in police custody. If not, then he can be in the magistrate custody. The maximum number of days for which a police custody can be granted is never more than fifteen days under any circumstances as far as criminal procedure code is concerned. And then this is the time for me to draw your attention as the person is arrested the steps that are taken by the investigating officer with which we shall be dealing during course of our lecture. What is the maximum period for which there can be a magisterial custody with which we shall be also dealing during course of time. No doubt about it because this is the this, this has got reference to section 167 of the criminal procedure code with which we, will be, we shall be dealing when we start right from section 154 up to section 176 of the criminal procedure code. So this is regarding police custody and magisterial custody. With this now, as we start learning criminal procedure code, we also come across two terms. One is officer in charge of a police station. As when we shall be dealing with section 154 of the criminal procedure code, dealing with what? Setting criminal law into motion by lodging what is known as FIR as per sub clause 1 of section 154. There are some powers which rest in the officer in charge of a police station and some powers as far as the police officer is concerned. Every person who is in the police department, irrespective of his grade, is a police officer, no doubt about it. But who is officer in charge of a police station for that? If you refer to section 2O, you will come to know.
the person who holds the charge of a police station who is in charge as far as police station is concerned who is head as far as the police station is concerned is officer in charge of a police station now it is impossible for one person to be there for entire period of 24 hours and hence in his absence whatever may be the reason in his absence the person who is next in his rank grade becomes what is known as an officer in charge of a police station but then section makes it very clear that oh it is only a person who is above the rank of a constable so who can become officer in charge of a police station so constable is a police officer no doubt about it but constable cannot become officer in charge of a police station during course of our lectures we shall be having a reference to metropolitan city and in order to understand metropolitan city because the constitution of the magistrate differs and there we will learn we will refer to section 2k and in order to understand section 2k as far as the criminal procedure code is concerned we will have reference to section 8 of the criminal procedure code thus as we start learning the provisions of the criminal procedure code we will work out details regarding all these terms no doubt about it but then you must i mean as soon as you come across a particular term when you know how to find out meaning of the particular term or you have to refer to some of the provisions from the point of view of understanding the meaning of it which will definitely serve the purpose and hence this is the time for me to remind you that well by merely listening to the provisions of the criminal procedure code with which i am dealing well it is impossible for anybody to understand criminal procedure code unless some homework or some class work namely when i i refer to it you immediately refer itself or by uh, there must be a reference to the bare act or when i refer to a particular term or whenever i refer to a particular chapter or whenever i refer to a particular section as soon as i have dealt with that you have do homework for the purpose of what for the purpose of going through that which will definitely be in your interest from the point of view of having right just and proper approach to study the law my role is not to have spoon feeding mind well my role is merely to show you a direction and once i have showed you a direction in order to achieve the object in order to reach the destination what is the approach that entirely depends upon an individual but if you follow the method if you follow the method as it is told by me i personally feel there won't be any problem as far as the understanding of the criminal procedure code is concerned with this now uh, whatever i wanted to tell you as far as introduction to certain extent is concerned will definitely this will definitely serve the purpose in the next lecture we shall now start understanding the chapters of the criminal procedure code from the point of view of understanding criminal procedure criminal procedure code